hey, long time no see, blah blah blah, let's skip all that and get right to it. I've been playing a bunch of TFT the past few months, and it's in fact become my favorite game to play and watch, for the single reason that, unlike League, it doesn't require any mechanical skills to be good, only game knowledge and pure RNG, <laughs> I mean intelligence. Jokes aside, today I'm bringing you a guide on getting platinum easily by abusing one single comp every single game this patch 9.20. I know that most of you think that this is not the way to play the game by forcing the same comp every single game, but this works. It actually really works and you'll climb like crazy. The only reason why you probably won't get diamond or above using this strategy is that people will know how to counter you when you get to those tiers. And from then on, you'll most likely have to adapt to each game depending on what RNG gives you item and champion wise since abusing one single little trick will make it very hard to climb. That being said, let's get on with Brawler Jinx and how to play it, why it works, and also a few tips and tricks that will guarantee you top 4 with this comp every single game. This is the final ideal build with this comp. Getting these champions with these items will put out enough damage to carry you easily to the top 4. The goal will be getting this comp out on the playing field in one of the 3 rounds after Wolves. So let's talk a bit about the stages of the game running this strategy. The early game is really dependent on what you get. Obviously you'll start to pick up every single brawler you come across, but you don't necessarily have to keep them on the battlefield. Focus on having 2 stars out there, particularly tier 1 2 stars, rather than losing 2 gold for each tier 2 2 star. Some of the synergies that work really well right now in the early game, in my opinion, are Knights, Void and Brawler 2. Having a Blitzcrank in there will almost always guarantee you one less unit dealing damage at the end if you lose. And now that we're talking about it, don't worry about losing in these stages. I like to try and take the less damage I can possibly take, but my focus isn't on win streaking. So I don't mind losing that 5 win streak if I keep a steady interest gold. So early game, you'll focus on 2 starring any tier 1 you can possibly get and play with the synergies of those champions. Say you get a 2 star Elise, play a Varus on her side or a Nidalee and a Jace. Literally anything that buffs your 2 star. You can place any items you get on any of these champions, provided that they're not gonna end up in your endgame comp. Also, don't combine items unless you're going to be using them in your endgame comp. Congrats on getting that BF and Chain Vest, but don't randomly put a GA on Lysandra just because she's carrying your mid game. Save that BF to turn it into a Giant Slayer on Jinx later on. Still, if you get both the BF and Recurve, you can safely turn it into a Giant Slayer and place it on a 2 star Vayne or any other carry you're running from that moment. After the early game is done, you should have a steady comp that might lose a few rounds and win a few rounds too. The important part here isn't winning, it isn't win streaking. It's all about taking the less damage possible. Which is why I love running knights and brawlers mid game. Since usually, even if you lose, you'll have taken out a bunch of enemies and end up losing 4 or 6 HP. I've had up to 9 round losses in a row and still end up with above 50 HP. Keep building up your synergies minimally by buffing the 2 stars of your comp. Keep adding single items or endgame combined items into champions that are not going to end up in your endgame comp. Up until Krugs, you should have only leveled up once or twice maximum, and that is at the point of going from level 3 to level 4 or from level 4 to level 5, and only if it's roundup leveling. Don't level up if you're 2 XP away from leveling. Econ is extremely important if you want this strategy to work. So while you're getting these champions, always look to round up till 10, 20, 30, 40 or 50 gold to make sure and hit that interest bonus at the end of the round. 1 gold might seem like very little, but it'll count. So you're sitting at 29 gold and you have a 1 star Elise in your comp and another one on the bench? I mean sell her, hit 30 gold and hold off on 2 starring her. Interest gold going up until wolves is more important than 2 starring champions in the mid game. So now you're reaching wolves. At this point, you'd better have 50 plus gold raked up. So what do you do now? The thing about this comp is that it has 2 carries. Jinx and Blitzcrank, but all brawlers, aside from Cho'Gath, are below tier 4. So once you're level 6 and have hit about 24 or 26 XP from the 32 required to level up to 7, now's the time to roll all the way down and start to pick up every single brawler you can find. At this point, you'll even most likely come across a Cho or a Jinx, but it doesn't even matter. Obviously pick them up, but what matters here is 2 starring every brawler and setting up 3 stars for some of them. If you come across Cho and Jinx at this point, you can safely level up once or twice to 7 and transition to the 6 brawlers with Jinx inside. Provided that you were able to combine at least 1 or 2 of the items of the endgame comp, this should carry 
scare you until Raptors and even maybe win streak a bit until then. Now you'll sit tight and econ until 50 again, only picking up brawlers and maybe a 2 star Lucian that will join you on this comp later on. This essentially marks the end of your mid game. End game is pretty straightforward and it only differs slightly based on how you're doing so far. If you're safely above 50 HP, you can use your extra 50 plus gold to level up without going under the 50 mark. If you're struggling to win and are afraid of losing, then roll to 2 star or even 3 star some of your units. Adding up Lucian to the comp is only a slight power boost and significant to actually place first, rather than survive until top 4. Like with all comps and games, you'll have your share of bad luck by not finding the right items or the right champions. But if you manage to play the 6 brawlers and a jinx, you can place top 4 most of the games and climb that way, even with bad items, even with 1 stars. Why? It's simple. The way this works is that every single round you'll take a very small amount of damage because you can mostly delete some enemies whatever comp they might be playing. If you play a ninja assassin comp and come across knights or brawlers, you'll have a hard time finishing off any enemies if you don't have the right 2 stars or items. So you'll end up taking big chunks of damage from the raptor stage and onwards. The beauty of this comp is that you'll be resilient enough to lose streak and still only be dealt a really small amount of damage. This way the other players with bad comps will be deleted before you are. And still, if you manage to pull off the right items and 3 stars, you'll win. <laughs> That's it. You just pure and simply will win against most other comps out there. I've had games where I've won with 5 3 star champions using this strategy. The ease with which you can pull this off is extraordinary. You don't need any spatula. In fact, it's a bad item for you. You don't need any tier 5. You don't need level 9. All of that hard to achieve stuff is completely unnecessary here. So. What's a few tips and tricks that I've learned from playing this a bunch of times now and actually getting to diamond with it? First things first, items. To have a complete build here, you'll need 3 large rods, 2 negatrons, 2 giant belts, 1 BF, 1 recurve and 1 sparing gloves. Bad items for this comp are the tier, chain vest and even the spatula. Still, if you come across a tier and a chain vest, simply combine them and give a frozen heart to Vi. In terms of priority, it'll depend on what you want to achieve this game. Are you taking lots of damage and want to survive till top 4? Prioritize the Ionic Sparks on Blitzcrank. Want to win since you're win streaking? Then prioritize the Giant Slayer and Trapclaw for Jinx. Jinx is your late game carry. Blitz is your mid game carry. These are the priorities. Morella's on show is a bonus and Frozen Heart on Vi is something to go around if you get bad items. So, Carousel especially the first two, try to get either large rods, negatron cloaks or giant belts, in that order, since getting multiple of these is okay in the long run. Remember that after raptors you'll only be getting completed items, so don't bother with saving up a BF for when you find a recurve after that point, just combine it into something strong for Jinx. Titanic Hydra, Static, Red Buff, even GA or Infinity still work on her although these aren't priorities. Extra AP items can go for Blitz and extra tiers or tank items can go for Vi. The way this comp works is by having Blitz instantly buff Jinx by pulling someone and having her assist in the kill. Lucian being added to the comp simply buffs Jinx faster since there's a good chance of her autoing someone that will die soon to one of the brawlers or Blitz's Ionic Spark. One problem I've come across is 3 starring Blitz and having him delete the enemy he's pulling before Jinx can even start autoing. In that case, I try to play Blitz somewhere where he won't delete someone instantly by pulling them. Vi is great because at the moment enemies come to Jinx, she'll already be ulting them. Rek'Sai is perfect for her heal and burrow because she'll make enemies switch targets before being able to eliminate her. Volibear deals amazing AoE damage without a single item and Cho's knockup is one of the best CCs in the game. And Warwick is honestly only there for the meat shield and 6th brawler stack. If by any chance you come across two spatulas or actually level up until 9, which I wouldn't do, you can actually use a Sejuani here, singly for the glacial buff and her ultimate. Be careful around Hextech comps. Having Blitz and Jinx together like this is really beneficial since Blitz will pull someone and make other targets prioritize it, Jinx included, and this will buff her straight into a kill, but it can also work horrendously when someone Hextech deletes their items since they're really close together. If you're playing versus even a single comp that has a Hextech buff, separate them like this and place extra items on Rek'Sai or Warwick and bait out Hextech users into them. I love having a single spatula on Rek'Sai and I have even baited out Hextech tech buffs into her multiple times. Some people play this comp more separated by having Jinx in the middle of the board alone, but I like having her really close to Blitz to buff her instantly, and if she has Trapclaw, 
let Rango, Kato or Akali come kill themselves by jumping on top of her. If you manage to get to Plat using this strategy, which I'm sure you'll be able to, then start messing with the placements of the team if you're not able to win within top 4. If you're winning, let them be as they are, but if not, try placing them on the other side of the map with a mirrored effect. Most of the times, it's a matter of having Blitz pull the right enemy or disabling the right opposing carries with Hextech. Let me sum up all this for you. Grab 2 star tier 1s in the early game and focus on buffing them with synergies. Econ in the mid game and try to play around a night brawler with a carry in the backline oriented team. Hit 24 or 26 XP level 6 by using extra gold while staying above 50. Roll down at this point by picking up all brawlers plus Jinx and Lucian. Transition at level 7. Econ again until 50. Decide whether to roll for 2 or 3 stars or to level up for the Gunslinger buff. Aim for 3 stars after getting level 8. Econ while above 30 HP. Roll down if below 30 HP. Prioritize large rods in the carousels, giant belts and negatrons after that, BF, recurve or sparring gloves after. In the last carousel before raptors, try to finish off one of the main comp items instead of going for another unfinished one. That's it. Honestly, I'm having a blast with this comp and getting top 4 in most of my games as well as winning a bunch. I've been playing in tiers from silver to diamond among a few accounts and it's worked in all of them. Mostly. Just have fun playing it. If you have any doubts, leave them in the comments down below and I'll come down to help whenever I can. See ya!